Hello everyone and welcome to my jungle. This is TD more than just orchids. This is TD Terry, as my friends call me. And if you don't know me, I am an orca holic, a serious addict. There is a spectrum, like with everything as to the severity or intensity or the lack of with everything, especially with hobbies, addictions. Both positive and negatives. This video that I am putting together right now is my observations on the hobby of orchid growing, collecting, hunting, smelling, shopping. It encompasses the complete hobby from start to finish. And there is a spectrum that everyone either graduates or they remain fixed or they limit themselves to progressing further, knowing their abilities and limitations and what they possibly could get themselves into just as far as in addiction, progressing to a more intense stage. Now, I really became quite interested in this I've always been interested in it, just because ever since I became aware of orchid societies and the community within, I have always been aware of the term uh, quirky or goofballs, some sort of adjective, kooky, used to describe what I am referring to what the topic of this is orchid hobbyists from the casual consumer observer orchid show viewer grocery store dreamer to AOS judge to best friend of the club in parentheses so there is a spectrum and everyone lies within that and this is a fun thing for me because it's a hobby it's not life it is life but it's not dependent it's not a need it is but it's not a life threatening need so this whole thing starts at number one, where you're just a casual observer when you are getting your cart and you walk by, or if you go to a floral shop or a big box store, you smile at, you even smile at the blue. And if you perchance buy a phalaenopsis or are given a phalaenopsis, your goal is more or less just to enjoy the blooms until they fall off. And then after that happens, you don't know what to do. And you don't know who to ask. So as far as you're concerned, it's dead. So at that stage, you really are not an orcaholic because there is no strong will desire to be in the presence of orchids. And generally, when you're at that stage, you may buy another and you may not. Someone may have given it to you, someone may give you another. It's really at the infant stage of orchid madness. Now, if you are healthy and you progress even further, to a next stage in which your goal would be to have at least one bloom at all times. 
which means that you probably have a couple of phalaenopsis that were from a big box store and you probably have ventured out into other species and genuses such as probably Oncidium alliances, maybe even uh, some intergenerics, things, maybe even some uh, den files. That's where I would say that number, the next stage of orchid hobbyism would be. The goal would only be to have one emblem at all times. And when that was achieved, or until that was achieved, that was all that mattered. Besides the genuses that I have mentioned, which are relatively known as beginner, fairly widely hybridized and cloned and available, indispensable. They're beginner orchids. Um, those are the orchids that these people would have and they would be limited to those spots. Although because of the internet, their awareness of orchids is now broader, but their knowledge and their confidence is still limited to what their comfort level is. And that does not include cat layers. They would not dream of a cat layer or anything mounted, not even a Vanda. So that's more or less the next stage. Then if you progress beyond that, I would say I would categorize that as kind of a low maintenance, lazy, in a way, orcaholic, because your goal is to not only have an orchid bloom at all times, but it's to rebloom the orchids, which is a difference. The person generally is quietly confident, doesn't brag or seek the spotlight, but he often does, or she likes to share with others when asked, but will not volunteer, is soft-spoken, usually likes to do research and is very low-key. Um, it is a hobby still, even though the addiction has grasped hold of the person, it is still more or less a hobby. So in that regard, they handle the plants as they would their garden plants or their house plants, which means no gloves, no TDS meter, no focusing on RO water. It's all the hose, maybe even, no, it's beyond the ice cube stage for sure. But they do like to show the results because they do have confidence, but it's a quiet confidence. They do not like to brag, but they do like to show their accomplishments without showing off, if that makes any sense. They do the best that they can with what they are given and the time that they have. And for the person to achieve their goal and to stay in this stage of orchid addiction without progressing further is quite an accomplishment because to progress beyond this stage is embarking on the verge of insanity and wastefulness. The next stage, I would say, would encompass what I would, dis what I would call a white glove lab coat, very focused, this person would generally have a greenhouse or a designated sunroom where their plants are quarantined from the elements. When they handle the plants, they are usually wearing gloves and they are constantly observing their plants to see if there are bugs, insects. These people are extra capricious and uh, very highly focused on maintaining the quality and the complete health of the plant. So therefore their goal is to not kill a plant. 
and these people will do anything. They will even do a surgical experiment to save it, even though that procedure is purely experimental, but because they believe that their conditions are so pure and sterile and therefore the closest to perfection, then whatever they do should be effective because they've done what the science says that that plant wants. And so therefore, any other thing that they do is already protected in advance. That would be the lab coat, white glove, focused orcaholic. It's a confident grower, very confident in their skills, their analytical skills, their, their knowledge of science and correct etymology. But at the same time, there is some self-deprecation involved where they are always second guessing. So there is some sense of where it's the same as science. You're purely dealing with theoretical propositions and trying to apply them in your conditions, which is what a scientist likes to do. It's manipulation. It's creating environments. So that is an addiction. The goal is to not kill and to do whatever it takes by whatever method, if it requires surgery. Now, the next phase, which can involve the previous, but not completely, which is what I would call the know-it-all orchid complex, or their goal would be to acclimate the plant to their environment, not their environment to what the plant wants. You understand? So it is a science-based hypothetical premise. The goal is, as I said, to rebloom, but to do that on their terms, the plant has to come in and acclimate itself rather than the other way around. So that means if you have freezing conditions and your plant is there and it's from Brazil or South Africa or Florida, it's not going to put on a coat so that it won't freeze. You're gonna have to raise your temperature. So this person is always manipulating and doing experiments and buying plants and killing a lot of plants. Impulse buying supreme, but has justification and has many reasons for the rationality, for the recklessness and the buying without any sense of Purpose, just for the purpose of to prove that they can make something submit to their will. That's what that is all about. It's to buck the system. It's reckless, depending on how much money you have, but it's all counterintuitive to orchid conservation. It's just a reckless buying with a smile and killing with a laugh like I'll just try another one a bigger one next time and I'll whip that one into submission so that is the reckless know-it-all orchid complex which is a very 
dangerous, backward, selfish way to be in any kind of a hobby. These persons do have the same, some traits crossover between the lab coat, white glove, but the lab coat, white glove doesn't necessarily need to go all the way to know-it-all orchid and vice versa. The know-it-all orchid does not have to progress to the ultimate cliche stage of the down low orchid insider, which if you don't know, you need to know at least one because even though DL has a negative connotation in orchid connotation, it is a good and a bad thing. It's like a quid pro quo, but it's a secret with a laugh and a wink and a condescension and a slap in the face and a privilege. These people know who to know just because they do. They know who to know and they know who to know to get who to know. And when they get to where they need to get, it's all about getting the best plant. Not necessarily the best looking plant, but the most awarded, the most desired, the most lusted after, the hottest, the most profitable, but they all want that, but they don't want to admit it to only a few that they have that access because they realize just the hypocrisy of it all, that we are all out for the same thing. But I am not one to get mad at someone who has advantages more power. You just have to get you a DL and cling on tight and don't sell your soul out. Don't sell your secrets to the devil. Well, first of all, don't tell your secrets to the devil. Do I need to say it again? Because the DL gets freebies or divisions from people who pay for those divisions. And DLs then are such professed growers because they only hobnob with the primo of the primo by first name in their private spaces, sipping Cristal and holding Arthur Chadwick clones, then you know what I mean? When they walk out of that space, they don't know what happened and they don't know amnesia happened. They don't know how these blooms happened on their plant. When they got it, it had a root on it. Can you believe Bart Moats sent them a vanda with, a, with no roots? No roots to me means zero roots, but to them, no roots means like three roots. But then, Every tragic story that it's you get your violin out and your your tissue Tito always ends in the best, most triumphant, climactic orchid story ever. Like, did you see that one? I know everybody saw that one by the superstar who I will not even name, who goes by one name only. And this person had the gall. And I love her for it. I love it for it. <sighs> what did the DL say? Supremo cliche, click. Not cliche, click. I said click at the top of top rung, top shelf. Chris Dow, 1930. She said, I'm not gonna say it, but she didn't know 
how. She just hangs around and listens and then just takes them and sits them out and, and then neglects them. And they just grow roots on their own and bloom threefold. It's the husband that always makes the wife, right? Especially the ultimate click DL wife that everybody knows or that everybody should know. So that's just my version and I am in there just like you. Hopefully you will see yourself in there if you are truly into orchids you will because it is a continuum it is an addiction the only to escape it are those who admire those blue phalaenopsis but don't know if that color will come back because it's such a blue it's gorgeous. What could they ever do to get that to come back so pretty again when those blooms fade? But soon after that stock browns, they forget all about the color and they want to know if they can throw it in the garbage. So I would say Number one, pre orcaholic is the one to stay. Otherwise, you might end up like this. But anyway, folks, this is all in fun. Have fun doing whatever you do, always. And do it 100. Otherwise, what are you doing? But you're just free willing and you're just trying to acclimate something that shouldn't be acclimating themselves to you in the first place. Anyway, continue to enjoy your orchids and all orchid things and people. We are all kooks.